everyone. I'm Canfar's National Ambassador, Malupa Habanyama. I'm so glad to be here today with you, and I'm so glad to be here talking about women's health. And uh, I'm here with two fantastic women themselves, Dr. Mona Lupi and Brecklin Bertazzi. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Now, my question for both of you, I just said your names, but please uh, further tell me about yourselves, your journey and your work. My name is uh, Dr. Mona Lutfi, uh, and I'm an infectious disease specialist and clinical researcher in Toronto. My clinical practice uh, is at the Maple Leaf Medical Clinic in inner city Toronto. Uh, where I mainly see uh, women living with HIV, uh, couples, uh, youth living with HIV, uh, and I, I primarily address uh, reproductive uh, health uh, issues um, uh, with, with, with uh, several uh, uh, different groups um, of patient populations. And my research is out of uh, Women's College Hospital, uh, and I do work uh, with uh, women and uh, HIV. Um, I uh, was the principal investigator of the largest uh, cohort study with women living with HIV across Canada, the Canadian HIV Women Sexual uh, and Reproductive Health Cohort Study, uh, CHIWOS, which used uh, community-based research. Um, and, uh, and I always use community-based uh, research in all the work that I do. And Brecklin. Hi, um, I'm Brecklin Bertozzi. I'm um, a woman living with HIV. I have been for 11 years. Um, I've given myself the title of peer community-based research consultant, as well as a peer researcher, which is a little new for me. So um, I am a peer researcher for many different studies. Um, I'm a peer engagement coordinator for a study called Heads Up 2 with the University of Victoria, which studies um, hand uh, HIV acquired neurocognitive disorder. I was a PRA with Chiwos, with Mona, and I'm participating in, in KTE, and I'm a consultant on a lot of different projects, most notably um, the uh, HIV and pregnancy guideline group that we're doing now. So happy to be here. Thanks for having me amazing work that you've both done and the journey that you're on. Can I ask what led you to do this research in the first place? I started my practice uh, in uh, 2004. And I guess just by the nature that I'm a, a cis uh, woman in practice with HIV, and actually I also speak French, so I have a lot of Francophone patients, but I started being referred a lot of patients that were women living with HIV. And, and I, I, I really developed my research questions from uh, my patients. You know, what, what were the most important issues for them? So back then in 2004, if you can imagine, some doctors were, were telling women living with HIV that they shouldn't get pregnant. Or, and actually fertility clinics were, uh, were denying and not accepting uh, people living with HIV as patients in their practices. So based on, on what my patients were saying were the most important topics for them, that's you know, how I chose to go into the areas of women and HIV um, and reproductive health and HIV. So just always directed by what was the most important things uh, being experienced by my patients and by women living with HIV in the community. How about you, Brecklin? How did you get into, into this work? Thanks, Mona. So I, I got into this work by way of support from, from a peer for myself through research. So my first contact after diagnosis with HIV was with a peer through a study that was had to do with peer support. And so um, that was really helpful for me. And um, as time went on, that same peer actually referred me to Mona for Chiwos as a PRA. So that's where my journey began with uh, being a researcher 
and it's just it's continued i i have grown into quite a, an advocate and activist for for my own health and my peers health and i'm very happy to be able to be involved in in all the decision making and and policies and changes that are going to be happening as i myself was a woman living with hiv who had a baby and and it's very exciting for me to to be able to voice you know my life experiences and be seen as an expert within in the research that's wonderful i'm so happy to have both of you doing this research and i remember as a young girl living with hiv um kind of googling things about women in hiv um and just the longevity of it and not finding much about it um especially the scope of canada so it has been amazing to grow up and to watch that that sector really grow and i need to really thank both of you and it is so amazing because uh when i do talk to some peers about like women and fertility and they're like oh maluba anytime you get pregnant you know just ask dr mona for all the information she has it like documented somewhere um so that's so interesting um so Dr. Mona, you mentioned uh, you always do community-based research and kind of work from that platform in Brooklyn. You are a community-based researcher. I'm wondering if you could explain to myself and the viewers, what does community-based research look like and why is taking this approach beneficial for the research outcomes? I can't actually imagine any researcher doing work not using community-based research. If you're doing research to improve or or optimize uh, the health um, of any population, I think really like you should ask that population um, and people living with that disease, like what are the most important research questions? Um, what are the most important topics? Um, what's the best way to do research? What's the best way uh, to take our research results into practice? So. You know, I, I really stand by that community-based research is essential for all research. I think Bert Brecklin has a t-shirt. What does your t-shirt say? Accredited by life. You know, yeah. that's what community-based research is about. I might have expertise uh, in research design, but Brecklin has the expertise with living with HIV. So uh, community-based research, it means we're partners in this uh, to ask the right questions, to make sure we're addressing the right topics, to do the research in a good way, respectfully. Preferably, we like to actually hire and train women living with HIV to be the research assistants, because then when, when a participant meets another woman living with HIV, you know, sometimes we've had experiences where when it's the first other woman living with HIV that they've ever met. And just that interaction sometimes is therapeutic. Great, and Brecklin, for you, why do you think it's important? Yeah, so can I just say how much of an amazing woman Mona is um, to all of us women living with HIV. Um, we appreciate her so much. Um, so yeah, so I have education in social work, I have education in business admin, but I feel like the, the best skills that I bring to this work are the skills that I learned from life, from, from the experience. I think that it's really important to incorporate that into this work if we're going to um, see meaningful um, changes and meaningful support and meaningful care. Because I, I see us as experts in our own care. I agree, and I think that's so wonderful. And I agree with the comment that I feel like all research should have a community-based uh, component, at least to it, um, because you need to ask the people that are going through it what's going on. And I think that um, as somebody who's been involved in research, Research and as somebody who's read research, it's just more, um, it becomes more official when I see that there's been that life experience and then that scientific experience as well. I want to ask Mona, uh, what do you feel are the research gaps for women living with HIV um, in Canada specifically? And have you seen any signs of progression in addressing these gaps over the past few years? I think you uh, mentioned it a bit, Maluba, that like over the decades, actually, at, um, like I would say if we look back uh, over 10 years ago, uh, there wasn't a lot of research with women living with HIV. The majority of the research uh, studies and clinical trials were with men uh, living with HIV. 
And we just didn't have a, a lot of data. We didn't have a lot of uh, research. However, just as you said, I think in the past decade, there's been a lot of researchers working with women living with HIV and concentrating and doing research on the topics that women living with HIV think are important. So I think the whole field of research uh, with women and HIV was a gap, but I, I think we're quickly resolving that gap, which is exciting. And Brecklin, I want to ask you, uh, what research and things are you doing to overcome these gaps? Yeah, so that's a great question. So I just really want to give credit to to Chiwos and how it's really began this work in a really huge way to open up what, you know, more of what the needs really are. So, um, you know, we from Chiwos came things like the Women-Centered Toolkit and um, Person-Centered Care, um, trauma and violence aware care, which, um, so I'm doing a study on trauma and violence, um, which absolutely needs to be addressed. And it's been a challenge, especially during, um, you know, the pandemic and in how to properly, you know, assess that because it is a very sensitive topic. And then there's stuff like the the HIV and pregnancy guidelines that I'm working on, um, getting that out there to women living with HIV, policy makers, um, support and clinician um, providers. Uh, a lot of people aren't aware of the things in those guidelines and they need to be, they need to start to be. And I, I, I can see myself as an example of that, um, not knowing, you know, if I was even able to safely have child, children when I was first diagnosed and not being able to find that information um, was very hard. And so so th the research is happening and there's a lot of great research coming from, from Chiwos and, and so I'm really excited about it. Dr. Mona, our CANFAR 2025 campaign goal is to eradicate the HIV epidemic in Canada by the year 2025. How can closing this gap in the research help us reach this goal? When I think of that question, the first thing that comes to my mind is U equals U. So uh, undetectable equals untransmissible. And I think that that's essential for women living with HIV trying to support women living with HIV to um, be on antiretroviral therapy and have an undetectable viral load. Uh, in Canada, uh, some key populations, particularly Indigenous women and Black women and women of colour are affected more by HIV, addressing all of the social determinants of health, mental health, trust in the healthcare system uh, to support them getting on antiretroviral therapy, being undetectable, I think is really key for that goal. In your opinion, um, in both of your opinions, what can people do, the general public do, uh, to be allies to women living with HIV to eradicate HIV stigma? I've recently had an experience where my HIV status was disclosed without my permission on social media. And it was tough for me because I hadn't disclosed on my social media at all, like not everybody in my life knows. And um, I took it as an educating point, really. And I decided to post that video that you saw, Maluba, of me in the, in the Katie Can't Pass It On campaign. Um, and my friends who didn't know were very supportive and and it was shocking the love that I got from the situation and the reactions that I got so I think I think that's in itself is in a way a way for you to be an ally to someone is being supportive of um you know someone disclosing and and being an ally to them if someone is is not okay with that disclosure as well and being a support to that person just being involved in in campaigns that fight stigma as well would be a great way to to be an ally i think even being an ally uh is sometimes uh just sticking up for your friend your peer in, in that moment sticking up for them not being a bystander um being an educator 
educator on the side. And like you mentioned, Brooklyn, like it really comes down to support. Um, I think support, yeah, means it all. Thank you so much, you two, for joining me. And thank you for joining the Canfar family. If you want more information on this interview, please go to canfar.com. And thank you all for tuning in.